Well, welcome to our seventh uh, day together and to our first video. Um, the theme for today is the humble approach uh, and the spiritual law, which is taken from Sir John uh, uh, Templeton's words, is every person's concept of God is too small. Um, the notion of the humble approach uh, or humility in theology or um, humility theology uh, is central to uh, Sir John's uh, approach to not just uh, science but also to religion. Um, and his views here may seem at first to some as controversial and perhaps even a bit improbable. Uh, if one is comfortable with one's sense of the ultimate reality, then uh, perhaps this is not an idea that comes naturally. But if you've ever experienced uh, a, a lack of fit between uh, your sense of the divine uh, and um, the reality of the way that the divine is expressed in your religious tradition, then uh, it becomes clear uh, what uh, Sir John means when he says, every person's concept of God is too small. So this idea is is perhaps it may seem a bit unusual up front, but it is central to virtually every uh, a highly developed uh, religious tradition. Every religious tradition that has a well-developed theology or religious philosophy comes eventually to the realization that what the religion is ultimately oriented toward, God, the divine, um, the absolute, the supreme, uh, that this actually is an immense and massive reality that can never possibly be contained in any one uh, set of symbols, in any set of sentences. It's just not possible that the infinite can be contained within a small container. Now, this doesn't mean that the container is, not, uh, is without value. After all, just because we cannot contain um, all of the water in the world in a cup doesn't mean that we shouldn't drink water. And uh, so, uh, so the, this is the basic idea behind um, the, the humble approach or humility theology. This is, a, this is a, an idea that uh, is very appealing to me because I'm a religious pluralist, and that is I think that each of the world's great religious traditions has much to offer. Uh, and that, of course, that doesn't mean that I want to try to practice all of the world's religious traditions. That would be not only impractical, but it might lead to superficiality. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean that I, I cannot continue to allow myself to be influenced by the traditions that do influence me. Um, in a way, I have to have the inner humility within to allow myself at different points to be influenced by this tradition, which is stronger in this area, and then in another situation to be influenced by that tradition, which may have more to say about that aspect of life. Um, and so the second uh, learning objective for today uh, follows from the first, and that's to show um, how uh, Sir John's notion of humility theology comes from this idea that, um, that uh, our God or our divine figure is too, is too small. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's uh, to say this about religion, I'll say a few more words about this in a couple of minutes to show how this idea is central to all uh, theologically and philosophically developed traditions. But it's also true with respect to science as well. See, for, for Sir John, this notion of humility theology or humility in theology, or perhaps more broadly, the humble approach, it, it, it cuts two ways. Because the humility is, should, needs to be practiced in, uh, in religion by realizing that what we say about the divine, helpful and useful as it is, isn't the last word, can't be the last word. That can be an idea that can be challenging for some and liberating for others. But it also applies to science. I'll have more to say about this in the next lecture. Um, it, because science in our day and age, perhaps not today, not quite as much as 50 years ago or 100 years ago, carries great cultural importance and authority, um, especially when it comes to anything to do with our health, 
Um, we defer to science. We defer to medical professionals. I certainly don't know how to, to diagnose the, my diseases. I need the help of, of a physician. I can't perform surgery on myself. Uh, so we completely defer there. But people who might defer in that case may not defer at all when it comes to matters having to do with what they see as religious concerns or religious interests. And on the other side, because of the effectiveness of science in so many spheres of our life, there, ha there, was, there was often this idea that science was the last word about everything. But uh, it's pretty clear that science doesn't have a whole lot to say about the afterlife or about, uh, about the source of our ethical intuitions. Uh, scientists can perhaps tell us much about the functioning of the brain, but it's not really possible for scientists to tell us why we feel the imperative to love and to be, to be honest and to, and to be just. Uh, Darwinian and social psychological uh, explanations are interesting and they're good as far as they go, but they just don't go far enough. That's the problem with reductionism in general, is that it's interesting, it's important. It's important to know uh, about the neural circuitry that occurs when I have a mystical experience. This is excellent information to have, but it doesn't explain anything more than the functionings of the brain. It doesn't tell me why or I have those intuitions, and it certainly uh, doesn't uh, give me principles that can allow me to negotiate the moral dilemmas of everyday life. So it's, as, it's good as far as it goes. Um, it's, for instance, if I were to stand on a scale here this morning, uh, don't have a scale nearby, but we can imagine it, it would show me my weight. But it wouldn't tell me anything beyond that. It wouldn't tell me why I have that weight or what I should do to reduce the weight or to perhaps increase my weight. It wouldn't tell me anything at all about my motivations and wanting to uh, reduce weight or change my weight. So the scale, it's a measure, it's a gauge, it has its usefulness. So humility theology or the humble approach applies both to religion when it becomes too uh, too universalizing, too exclusivistic, but it also applies to science when it becomes sort of quasi-religious or scientistic, to use a, a words that we throw about in the academy. Science is good. Scientism is, is not any more helpful than some other kind of religious fundamentalism. Scientific fundamentalism or scientism when people insist on a materialistic approach and that science and its measurements can tell us everything important about the higher dimensions of the human spirit, that also is not based in any evidence. It's not, it's not based in, in actually a, a, a good argument even. Metaphysically, it's kind of suspicious. All right, so I'd like to say a few words. You can see I get a little bit excited and passionate about that topic that has, that has animated me from the beginning of my academic career, uh, and that is to try to create a space uh, for, um, to try to create a space for religious uh, language and religious thought and religious experience to find its legitimate place in the academy, in the university, among the sciences as well, as a legitimate and profoundly important aspect of life that simply can, does not yield to uh, being reduced to some scientific explanation. Uh, so to uh, say a few words about this idea that your God is too small, well, that phrase, in a way, uh, is not original to Sir John, uh, and some of us may remember the 1952 book, but reprinted many times by a a British uh, a British um, a bishop uh, and uh, ecclesiast. Uh, his name was J. B. Phillips. He published a book called "Your God Is Too Small." And in this, the the bishop distinguished between what he called unreal gods and an adequate God. And so this difference then between a kind of God of our imagination that may be of some value and the real God uh, wasn't original to, to uh, J.B. Phillips as well. This is, a, is very much a part of Christian theology back to its origins. We find traces of that in the New Testament and many writers such as uh, Dionysius and Eckhart uh, who distinguished between the Godhead and God. My own doctoral advisor, Gordon Kaufman, distinguished between the available God, the God of our everyday religious experiences, and the real God. 
The, uh, the names could be multiplied indefinitely. Uh, in Judaism, the great philosopher Maimonides wrote that um, one comes nearer to the apprehension of him, of God, uh, may he be exalted, to use the traditional language. One comes nearer to the apprehension of the divine with every increase in the negations regarding the divine. More simply stated, what the ultimate reality is can only be approached by putting aside our limited conceptions of it. As it says in Taoism, the way that can be followed is not the eternal way. The name that can be named is not the eternal name.